Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Ralph Connor, your host of Ralph TV. Today, we're on location in Mobile, Alabama, in the suburb of Daphne, Alabama. We're here today in order to examine what is the true meaning of valor and sacrifice, even in the face of racism and turmoil. We're going to take you into the home of a veteran of the World War II Battle of the Bulge, a person who was actually captured and a prisoner of war. We're going to take you into the home of an individual and let you examine firsthand what type of men it took for America to win the Second World War. And we're also going to examine the human factor of what was it like to be in a segregated army and to withstand the abuse of being a colored troop in 1944. We're going to talk with a Tech 5, a person who was a member of the Field Artillery Battalion known as 333, the 333rd Field Artillery Battalion, a gentleman named Willie Alphonse. We're going to find out what it takes and what it was like, and we're also going to find out a redeeming message of what it means to love America and to go to the next generation to respect that love that will never die in spite of the abuses that these troops receive. Join us as we go forward and examine the secrets of Daphne, Alabama and the meaning of the 333 for posterity. Thank you and come with us as we go further and go mobile in Mobile, Alabama. Hello, we're in the home of Willie Alphonse, who is a member of the Field Artillery Battalion known as 333. We're proud to be here today to ask an interview of Willie Alphonse about his experiences during the Battle of the Bulge during World War II. We want to start by thanking you, Willie, for inviting us into your home. We appreciate that you take a few time to give us a statement about your experience. Can you tell us how you got into the Army? Um, were you drafted or were you enlisted? Did you enlist? I was drafted. What year were you drafted? Uh, must, have, must have been... Uh -huh. You were in 1944, you were in St. Vith, Belgium, at which you were in the Battle of the Bulge. So how many years had you been in the Army before you was over there in uh, St. Vith? As I know, you came through Camp Gruber in Oklahoma. One of the best that I can remember is uh, to back up the time that I was in service. I was liberated in 1945 and was in uh must have been the 28th of, of 1945 right so that was i was in service 18 days i mean Thirty-five days. Just take your time. Mm 
It was 35 months and 18 days to read Hood. That's what it was? Yeah. So it's like almost three years. So it would have been 1942 when you went in. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, when I went in, went in, went in. When well, you went in the service, you were drafted. Yeah, when I went in 43. In 43? Yeah. You were drafted. Right. So tell me, when you were drafted, where were you at at that time? What location? Where did you live at when you were drafted? Daphne. You was here in Daphne? Yeah. So was you born in Daphne? Yeah. All your life you've been in Daphne. Right. But well, how old are you now? Uh, 86. 86. 86. 86? Right. So tell me, in 1943 in Daphne, uh, what was going on? Were, was, was most of the guys in your age group drafted? Yeah. So what was uh, Daphne like in 1943? Was it the same as it is now? Was it a small town? Or what was going uh, on here? It was a small, small town. I had about two stores. Well, it's a beautiful town now. I mean, over the years, it had really built up. I'm really impressed with Daphne, Alabama. Tell me this, though. When you was drafted, where'd you go then? I went to, uh, went to uh, Fort McPherson in Georgia. Fort McPherson? Yeah. Well, how long did you stay there? About two days. Then what they do to you? Send me from there to uh, Oklahoma, uh, Camp Gruber, Oklahoma. So you tell me about Camp Gruber, what happened when you got there? How did they treat you? What did you go through when you got there? Well, when I got to Oklahoma, we went in, we had some guys came in with broad markers, and they were lucky enough to give me one and one. So I went up to that one, and then the next day, they sent me to KP. And I worked in there for about two weeks. You worked in KP for two weeks? Yeah. What was the training like at Gap Camp Gruber? Well, it was all right. Well, when I left off of KP, I, um, I asked the first sergeant, how long did you have to be on KP? And he said, uh, no longer than no longer two days. And I said, sort of like, I've been there since I've been here. And I see, I, see I, I, was, I had been in the CC camp, and I know a lot about it. And uh, I told him, and so he said, well, he'll find out. He went and got me and said, well, what else I supposed to be doing? I said, I'm a truck driver. Mm -hmm. So he looked at the records, didn't have none. You got no record. Mm -hmm. The only thing was on there was just my name on the, on the roster. So he said, well, this BC asked me, what did I, what kind of work did I need? I told him I was driving a driver's truck. So he uh, asked me how I like a KP. I told him, listen, the crooked I go in there and he can get out. <laughs> so he said, well, you a truck driver, you come on and uh, try to drive and uh, check to see if I can drive. Mm -hmm. So we went down to the motor pool and all the trucks were jacked up. Because it was cold weather that day, all the trucks were jacked up. Mm -hmm. So we had, we had one truck that main the truck. They would drive jacked up. So uh, I, uh, he put me on a truck and told me to drive it. And I got in and warmed it up. And he told me to shift the gears in it with a, with a jacked up. Mm -hmm. And I shift the gears with it. And the gears screw up. Mm -hmm. And he said, you can't shift the gears without scrapping like that. I said, no, and you can't either. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, he said he could. I said, well, you got the gear, that's all. Mm -hmm. So he got on, did, well, he, he showed, showed up, did a mess up. But he didn't know anything about it. And, and you know, didn't know about how the gear was. And uh, he said, well, we'll take the truck down and put it on the ground. And you say you can drive it. I said, yeah, if you put it on the ground. And uh, so that's what we did. 
And he, uh, so, um, we went off out of the, Barumza, we call it, Barumza Road. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, I brought the truck back in. When I come back in, I did a different development. I broke the gear down, coming in with them. And we had a, for the first side of the, was this, uh, first lieutenant. Yeah. Was on the service battery. And he, uh, was listening, like, like he could drive. Mm -hmm. And he listened at us when we come in. And he come in, he, he going at us first, like, say, Sergeant, who was that drive that truck and come in? He thought he was not messed up. Oh, he flew off and told me, me in a, me in a hurry, telling me, quick, that I was the one driving the truck. So he said, well, I want you to drive it again. So he took me out there and he went out and he told me, saying, I want you to drive it. I said, hey, you don't want no tricks, mm -hmm. tricks questions on it. He said, no. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. No, he went away. He told you to drive just like you did when you come in here. And I said, went out with it, went out with it, shift and going out and coming back. And I come back, I'm showing up those out. And come on in, he say, okay. So he left, went down to BC. And I'll BC, he told the BC about it. And uh, so I'm saying, he's the best driver I've ever seen. Well. So he, he uh, the BC said, well, that's good. I want him. So tell me now, how long were you in boot camp? Did they call that boot camp? Six, 16, uh, six weeks. Six weeks? Yeah. So tell me now, what, what happened after you were trained to drive the truck? Were, do you remember the officers there? Were there white officers for the black troops? How did they treat you guys? All, all of our officers were white. All the officers were white? All but, all but the chaplain. Mm -hmm. The chaplain? Yeah. The chaplain was black, yeah. but the officers were white. Yeah. So how did they treat you guys? Did, they, did you get along with those people? Yeah. So they were fair with you? You figured they were yeah, pretty fair with the yeah, black troops? Yeah. They did, did, did good, I think. Well, you know, for being black and white together. Yeah, back in back then, yeah, 1940. Back in that time, yeah. So tell me this though, when when um when you left Camp Gruber, where did you go then when you left Oklahoma? What did they do? Did you have to go through Texas and Louisiana or did they put you on a ship somewhere? How did they get you out of the country? Well we left. Camp Gruber went down on, on my news. I don't live down in Texas. Right. Uh, I was in the, in the woods. And uh, we come back from down there back to Camp Group again. We stayed in Camp Group about must have been about five or six weeks. Mm -hmm. And then it put us on a train carried us to New Jersey. New Jersey? Yeah. And we rode it. About four or five days on the train. I was going up and down the train track. We were going to get it. So we finally, finally made it. Uh -huh. And then we went in there. I met a Cap Kilman in New Jersey. Cap Kilman in New Jersey? Yeah. I met a Cap Kilman we went in. And, uh, we all went to shower. 